Ashley, and I'm going to be going over activities for the areas of language, phonology, semantics, pragmatics, morphology, and syntax. Activities you can do at home to progress phonology with your child. Phonology is about the production of sounds. So phonology focuses on single sounds in words. For example, the P in potato or B in ball. So our first activity that you can do at home with your child is called a sound box. You can have a big box like this, or you can have little boxes that you can take in the car or grocery shopping or wherever you wanna go with it. What you'll have in the box is you can pick a letter and then come up with different items to put in a box that begin with that letter. So Latanya, what do we have in our B box? how we have tons of things in there that start with the letter B, if that's what you want to work on with your child. And this is totally customizable for any type of sound or letter that you want to work on. The second activity that you could use to work on phonology with your child is called auditory bombardment. This is a term that speech language pathologists use, and it's very simple. All it means is that you will present your child with a sound that you want to focus on as much as you possibly can. You're just exposing them to that sound all. A game that you could do to target auditory bombardment is called I Spy, or you could do a treasure hunt. So if you were going to do I Spy and you wanted to focus on the letter T, what you could do is I Spy, Toes, Tongue, Towel, Tub, those kinds of words. So Latanya, I Spy Something Tall. Towel. Good. And I Spy Something Blue. Good job, Latanya. So you can see that whatever you pick on will work on that sound that you want to work on. If your child really likes to play on their iPad or tablet, a game that you could download to focus on phonology is called Articulate It. Articulate It is a really fun game that just has a bunch of different pictures focusing on the sound that you choose to focus on. Your child can go through them and pick the sounds that they're instructed to pick. And they really enjoy playing this game. Next, we're going to talk about activities you can do at home with your child to improve their semantics. Semantic refers to word meanings in their, your child's vocabulary. So ways that you can improve your child's vocabulary at home can just be done through reading stories, telling stories, and other types of communications throughout the day. One game that you can play that really helps with your child's vocabulary is called hullabaloo. Now there's different variations of this, the variation I'm going to show you is when you have different pictures of vocabulary words that you're working on on the ground. For example, instead of saying frog, you can work on the vocabulary word amphibian. So if you wanted to work on that, you would have pictures of amphibians and frogs and different kinds of things on the floor. Now you'll play music and your child will dance and you guys will have fun and then you pause the music. When you pause the music, you will say, everybody step on the amphibian and they have to find the amphibian picture from all of the other pictures. And this really helps you to see how they're doing in learning that vocabulary word that you guys are talking about. So now let's see a demonstration of this. Now we're going to show you a demonstration of how hullabaloo works. All right, guys, are you ready for the music? Yeah. Come move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Stop. Everybody jump on the table. Good job! All right, here we go again. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Like... <laughs> okay, everybody jump on the soccer ball. Is that the soccer ball? Right. Oh, snap. No, it's not. What does a soccer ball look like? Uh, it's round. <laughs> Good job, guys! Another way that you could build your child's semantics is through self-talk and parallel talk. These are terms that speech language pathologists use, and they're very simple to understand. Self-talk is when you're just talking to your child about things that you are doing. So if you, as a parent, are in the kitchen, washing dishes, or cooking dinner, or if you're doing laundry, you can just be talking to your child as you're doing these things. So for example, if you're washing dishes, you could say, 
I'm washing the dish now. Oh, I have to make sure I have soap on my sponge. And these are just going to build vocabulary for your child and just expose them to language. Another thing is parallel talk. Parallel talk is when you're now shifting the attention from you to your child and you talk about what your child is doing. So we have Latanya over here building a tower. Wow, Latanya, look at the tower you're building. That's a big tower and you have a lot of blocks on it. Good job building your tower, Latanya. As you can see, it's just another way that you can encourage a lot of language into your child's daily activities. Now we're going to talk about activities you can do at home with your child to improve their morphology. Morphology is just about what you can add to words to change the meaning of the words. So this would include plural S, ING, articles, prefixes, suffixes, and so forth. So let's take pig for example. Pig means one pig. Pigs means two pigs or multiple pigs. So the S changes the meaning from one pig to two pigs. And that's just what morphology is about. So one activity you could do with your child is just play a game with prefixes and suffixes. For example, you could work on the progressive ing suffix with your child. You could say, let's come up with all the words that end in ing. So, Latanya, how could I add ing to drive? Driving. Good. How about talk? Good job. So this is a game that you could play while your child is in the back seat and you're driving or even while you're grocery shopping. You could just keep coming up with words and adding different endings or beginnings to them. Make sure that you're mindful about how you are encouraging your child's morphology development. This is a difficult concept and it takes a couple years for children to finally get the hang of it. Latanya, what are you playing with? A block. Wow, look at all of your blocks there. You have more than one block, so we would say blocks. Yeah. Good job. So make sure that you're not too critical of your child when they're not saying the correct endings to words or prefixes to words. Make sure that you're just very encouraging. So next we're going to talk about activities you can do at home to help with your child's syntax. Syntax is how words are ordered and combined in sentences. It's important to remember that when providing models for your child's syntax, we don't want to overcorrect them because then they'll feel scared to create sentences. So the first activity that you could do is called Lego sentences. With Lego sentences, you could just take blocks or Legos or any kind of other building items that you have and you could write words on them or you could get pictures to put on them if your child isn't at reading level yet. While your child is playing with them, you can see what kind of sentences they are creating. So let's see what kind of sentence Megan could create here with our Lego sentences. Let's see. Run, spot, see, the. Hmm. How else can we make that a sentence? See, spot, run. Oh, good job, Megan. So you can see how you can come up with a lot of different sentences depending on the different types of verbs and adjectives and articles and nouns that you can add to your blocks. So the next activity that you could do to work on your child's syntax at home is called running sentences. Running sentences are something that you can do at any point during your day. So if you're grocery shopping, if you're on a walk, if you're in the car, these are just things where you can create a very simple sentence with your child and both of you can expand upon the sentence at each turn. So, if we came up with a simple sentence like, the cat sits, you can ask your child to then provide a word to elaborate on the sentence. So, Megan, what can we say about the cat sits? The happy cat sits. Perfect, so Megan added the word happy and that makes sense in the sentence. So now I can say, hmm, the silly cat sits. So the silly happy cat sits. And then we can go back and forth, just adding words to our sentence to expand upon it. Next, we're going to discuss activities you can do at home to help your child's pragmatic development. Pragmatics are how your child uses language in social situations. So one activity that you could do is when your child is on the phone or using Skype to talk to grandparents or aunts and uncles or any kinds of friends that they may talk to on the phone or Skype. 
When you're doing this, you can help your child maintain topics of conversation, maintain eye contact, or even engage in turn taking. So this may look like your child asking grandma how her day is, or making sure that they're looking at the screen when they're speaking with grandma, and responding to any questions that grandma may have been asking them. Another activity that we can do to help your child's pragmatics is guess that feeling. This is a game that you can do anytime when you're at the house or in the car or any other time that you're interacting and playing with your child. So for guess that feeling, all you could do is just cover your face like a modified version of peekaboo. You would cover your face and make a different facial expression and ask your child to say what expression they're making. So a demonstration could be, Megan, I'm going to cover my face and I want you to tell me what kind of facial expression I'm making, okay? Okay. Mad. Good job. Right, let's try again. Sad? Is this a sad face? No. What kind of face would this be if I have a smile? Surprise? Uh, could be surprised. Maybe happy? Happy face. Yes, good job. So those are just ways that you can help your child to understand how facial expressions could be used in social situations when they're using language. Our final activity is that you could work on your child's social etiquette. Social etiquette could be used while you're at the grocery store, at the playground, or even with your mailman that you see every day. You could work on greetings, like teaching them to say, hi, Mr. Mailman. Or you could teach them about strangers and who they should not talk to while they're at the grocery store or maybe while you're taking a walk. And you could even teach them how to engage in conversations, like if they're at the playground. You could help them learn how to go up to other kids and say, hi, can I play with that? Or can I play a game with you? Or even ask what kind of games the kids like to play while they're there. All these activities can really help to develop your child's social language and help them to be great users of language.